And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at a game called Last Message. As in, I'm dying, but I'm leaving you one last clue to find who killed me. Oh wait, I'll leave you one more clue. Okay, I'll leave you one more. <laughs> That's kind of the theme of this game. So think Where's Waldo, a big picture where there's a million things on it, and one of them is the criminal. You're not looking for Waldo, you're looking for the murderer. And this is a team game where... Uh, the de a bunch of detectives try to a victim from the grave beyond or whatever is helping these people try to figure out how th who the murderer is. It's not a complicated game. It's not really a deduction game per se. This is a party game. Let me show you. At the beginning of the game, you're going to pick one of these pictures. You have one here of superheroes and villains. You got one here of a bunch of little fairy creatures and dwarves. You have a zombie apocalypse. You have a Wild West scene. You have a Stone Age type scene. And then you have aliens. You're going to find four cards that make the big picture of that and place them here in the middle of the board. And then this board is going to go behind a shield. Two players are playing behind the shield. One of them is the criminal. The other is the victim. Everyone else is the detective. So you can play minimum, in this game, three players. Once you put this behind here, the criminal is going to pick the person who is the criminal, who's the murderer or whatever it might be. So you can pick anything. So maybe I'll pick, uh, let's see, this guy here with three eyes. So I put this little magnetic token on him here, a little, so just to show who he is to the victim. So the victim knows who the criminal is, the criminal knows who the criminal is, but no one else does. They're all looking at that big picture. A sand timer is then flipped, and the victim is going to start writing things and drawing things on here. So maybe they do this here. So they draw the guy with three eyes, and they might even write three eyes. Now you can only write each word once. I might write purple here too. Um, uh, I might draw the down spaceship nearby and then the guy shooting the web out, that big green guy. I'm not a very good drawer here. But the time's going to run out. When the timer runs out, these are the clues. Now, I feel like um, this is helpful. Three eyes, purple. It's going to come pretty close. But the criminal gets to erase five of these squares. So if I was the criminal, this is what I might do. I might erase this here. One, two, I'm erasing that three eyes, nonsense, three. I'll erase this square, four, and we'll get rid of that one too. So this is all that people get. Now they might be able to figure out that that's the bottom of the word purple, maybe. This is not helping them at all. They'll look at the picture for a while. They'll pick someone, is it this person? If it is, yay, you win. Otherwise, we leave this clue out, we grab another board, do the same thing, but this time, the criminal can only erase four squares. Then when you're done with that, only three squares and only two squares, and if at any point the detectives get it, the detectives and the victim win, otherwise, the criminal wins. Now, there are a few things you can do to make it harder. You can make it so that the victim can't use text, only pictures. The criminal erases an extra square. Or you pick an item on the board instead of a character. But that's it. It's going to be a joint victory or the criminal wins. I'm a big fan of the art here. There's so much going on in these pictures. In fact, I'm not normally a big fan of zombies, but this is one of the best uses for zombies I've ever seen in these pictures. It's, they're very much like a Where's Waldo thing. There's a lot going on in these pictures, and there's a lot of similarities. I think some of them are harder than others. And, you know, at the very beginning, the criminal's trying to pick somebody who is not too easy to describe. But they might, like, I might pick this alien because I'll think, well, you'll never think I'll pick that. Or I might pick one ordinary caveman on this huge picture. So I really like that concept, and these are great drawings, and it seems pretty easy to add more of these. But six gives you a lot. 
This game is so easy to get into. It's so easy to jump into and play. It works for large groups. Uh, it says three to eight on here. I think eight might be a lot with five detectives, or I guess that's six detectives. That feels like it might be too many. I, I think the max I've played this with has been six so far. But I played it multiple times, and I played it as everything. The, the victim, the murderer, and the detectives. Now, I personally like playing one of the two, the drawer or the eraser, because it's fun to figure out. As a drawer, you're deciding, do I want to make this picture fit in multiple squares? You can only erase part of it. Or do I want to draw, like, nine different things that will help everybody else out? And the murderer, you're trying to cross off the stuff that helps people out the most. The detectives are just sitting there trying to figure out which one's which. Now, this game has one flaw. The rules do not say anything about the length of time the detectives have to pick somebody. You've got to put some sort of house rule in this. A minute, 30 seconds, whatever, because they could sit there and argue all day and take a look at it and think about it. It could just go on for a really long time. I found that I wish there was a timer in that where you look around and finally say, here's the person, come to some sort of consensus. But, I mean, you can just institute it yourself, and perhaps you don't care. But every game of this I've played, the detectives do sit around and talk about it for a really long time. And you're trying to get into the psyche of the person and the victim, and like, well, they would have drawn it this way. If they draw someone with three eyes, they would have, you know, you try to think that out. The other thing about this game, and this is very much the case, I have yet to see, on normal mode, the detectives ever lose. They're just... Too much information is easily given out by the drawings, especially with fewer squares. And I wondered, why isn't there a scoring system set up here? Like, if you get it on the first time, you get more points. Because that way, there's like some sort of balancing thing there, but it's win or lose. Like, I would say if you get it right the first time, you get five points, and then three points, and then two points, and then one point, or something like that. Uh, and I would play with some of those hard things, like, hey, you can't use text, or pick an object, or... The criminal can cross off one less. I think you're going to have to do that. But despite all those little things I just said, this is really entertaining. If you like looking at those big picture books with a million things in it, like I am, this is for you. The idea of erasing the different squares is a fascinating, unique one that I have not seen done in a game before. This is a pretty solid party game that I, I really think is worth looking into and checking out. Uh, it works with bigger groups. You can switch roles back and forth. It's more of an experience, per se, than a game. At the end of the day, you're just, oh, we found you. Ha ha. Let's go. Let's try it again. I don't think many people are going to play this just once because someone's going to go, I want to be the victim now. And then you play again, likely. So, and like I said, I think they'll be able to add more pictures and stuff later on. I wonder if this one might be a bit of a party hit this year. It's certainly one of the best ones I played. Check it out. That's Last Message. I'm Tom Vassell. We'll see you next time. Dice Tower Judgment approved.